if you're trying to reach Mach 10 in the Dark Star like this, then keep watching this video and I'll show you how. And this method will not be used. There's a much easier way. One of the most important steps is making sure the afterburners have a key bind. To do that from the Microsoft Flight Simulator home screen, click on Options and then Control Options. From this screen, simply select the device with the button that you want to have a binding to. In the search box, type afterburner or part of the word, and then find the toggle afterburner input and bind a button to that. And when that happens, this screen comes up, select start scanning, press the button you want to use as the afterburner, validate it, and then make sure you apply and save, and then go back. So now the afterburner can actually be activated. Now there are a few ways to verify the afterburner is working. Here's two. Select full power and then hit the afterburner key bind that you set up. When that happens, the throttles will jump forward to the max or the afterburner position. Another easy way, go to the exterior view and watch for this to happen. When you see that orange glow, the afterburners are definitely working. Without afterburners, you probably won't even reach Mach 1. Another tip from the aircraft selection page, make sure the fuel level is at 100%. Also from this page, put in a departure point and a destination. There's a reason for that. By entering those two points, you actually get a course line and a distance to go. If a destination is not entered, you get this, a whole lot of nothing. I'm doing the takeoff without afterburner. It can be used and the airplane will rotate off the ground around 180 knots. With a positive rate of climb, gear can be retracted. Here's the inside of the Dark Star already climbing through 5,000 feet. A good speed to hold during the climb is anywhere from 250 to 300 knots. Another thing that needs to be done during the climb while we're at a slower airspeed because the faster the airplane goes, the larger the turn radius, and if you're going Mach 10, it's gonna take a large distance to get the airplane turned in the proper direction. Here you can see the course line is to our right, so we need to make a right turn to about 065. We can do that while we're at a slower speed and make that turn in a shorter radius. The other objective is simply climbing the Dark Star up to about 32,000 feet. Let's fast forward to that point and move on to the next step. As that's happening, we're turning on course and the aircraft is climbing at a rate of approximately 8,000 feet per minute. 250 knots is being held, but you can climb at 300. It'll just be a slightly slower climb rate. Now that 32,000 feet has been reached, I've entered a shallow descent. Also at this point, the afterburner needs to be on. The aircraft is going to be descended to 30,000 feet and the acceleration phase of the flight is going to begin. Maintain 30,000 feet while accelerating until the airspeed reaches approximately 600 knots. To save a little bit of time, the video has been sped up 10 times. Once the aircraft reaches 600 knots, a climb can be initiated and the scramjets can be activated by raising the red guard and clicking the switch and by clicking these four squares down at the bottom of the instrument panel. The climb attitude should be somewhere between five and 10 degrees of nose up pitch. Also looking at the airspeed trend indicator line, which is this green line over here, the airspeed is increasing, but also the altitude's increasing and the Mach speed is increasing. And the next thing we're looking for is approximately Mach 3. Be sure to continue the climb. Once Mach 3 is reached, the scramjets will automatically activate following the steps we discussed earlier. Here's what scramjet activation looks like from the outside. Here's what scramjet activation sounds like from the inside. The rate of acceleration is increasing along with climb rate and the aircraft should now be climbed up to 275,000 feet. Main engine shutdown happens automatically and there's now engine instrumentation for the scramjets. The engine does shut down automatically on the climb, but when the descent occurs, the engine will restart automatically. Scramjet engines have no moving parts and a normal turbine engine would not work at this high of a speed. Scramjet actually stands for supersonic combustion ramjet that works them using fancy principles of science and quite possibly even magic. Also, don't reduce power. Doing so could turn the scramjet off. On this flight, the fastest I could get was Mach 9.96. 
Depending on temperature, you may get close to Mach 10, you might go slightly above Mach 10. But even in this case, we're only talking a few knots difference of speed between Mach 9.96 and Mach 10. And for more aviation and flight simulation content, be sure to check out the rest of my channel for over 100 videos on aviation and flight simulation. There's also a guide with a four part series on how to fly the Cessna Citation Longitude, videos on how to set up the FMS on the CJ4, along with a systems and switches video on the FlySimWare Cessna 414, and two other videos on that airplane and many more. All these videos are available to channel members of the private pilot level or higher. I am a professional pilot with over 8,000 hours and I've been flying business jets for almost the last 20 years. If you're looking for accuracy and increasing the realism of your simulation experience, please consider becoming a member and watching these videos.